Hi, welcome to Everybody 3D Prints. Today I'm going to do a video on the installation of our new original gantry upgrade. The upgrade is intended to improve the stability of printing as well as to add uh, part cooling and auto leveling. So let's get started. So the upgrade consists of an extruder mounting plate, a bracket to mount the um, leveling sensor and the part cooling fan, a replacement for the current backing of the extruder mounting bracket. This will allow us to raise the Z end stop switch. This stiffens up the entire X axis. Since we're removing the drag chain, this is going to anchor the uh, extruder cable. This is a tramming block, which we'll get into later. This section here is the auto leveling sensor setup. This is the part cooling fan. This is the um, dual gear uh, BMG clone extruder assembly that we're going to replace the existing extruder with. Um, the upgrade allows you to use your old extruder, but uh, this is a, um, a more reliable extruder. And on this machine, I'm choosing to replace it entirely. And this is just the hardware necessary to mount all of that. that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the extruder assembly entirely. We're going to remove the drag train entirely. The rollers that have that currently mount the extruder assembly are going to be tilted 90 degrees so that they run on top and bottom of the extrusion, uh, which gives it more stability. So in order to begin that process, the first thing we want to do is take off the belt. And we do that by unscrewing the two screws that hold it to the extruder tray. Okay, so once we've removed the belt from the screw holes, we're just going to pull it out of the way and we'll put that back on later. So the second thing we're going to be doing is removing the cover for the extruder. And that takes out the, we have to take out these four screws. Just lift this off. Now we're going to move, remove the uh, drag chain. So we start by disconnecting the extruder cable. We're going to unscrew the two nuts and bolts. And then we can slide the, the extruder cable out from the uh, drag chain just by carefully manipulating it and getting it to slide through the links. And we can leave that on the side. We'll be reusing that. So next, we're going to remove the screw that holds in the other end of the drag chain from the sliding nut. And 
and take the sliding nut out of the aluminum extrusion and pull the drag chain out of it. So now you can see the rollers. We're going to get these rollers to roll on top and bottom because when they loosen it all in this position, they create this rocking motion. The slightest slip of any of these screws will allow this rocking motion, which makes it difficult to get a, a clean, crisp print. Once they're on top and bottom, gravity will hold it down into the V-slot. And uh, if it loosens a bit, it won't be quite as... Um, as uh, affecting the print. So we're going to remove the extruder assembly from the tray it's mounted on. The first thing we need to do is unplug the um, LEDs that are on the bottom of the tray. So that's this back plug here. The rest of the plugs can stay in place because it's all part of the extruder assembly. Then we're going to go underneath, right in front and in back of the extruder section, there's a screw that has to be taken out. And then we can lift off the entire extruder assembly in one piece. All right, so now that we've removed the um, extruder assembly, um, we're going to have to take it apart because we're going to utilize a few pieces. We're going to utilize this PCB and the bracket that holds it at a minimum. Um, but we also might want to utilize this nozzle and uh, the wires for it. Now the new kit comes with um, a new heat block, a new nozzle, and a new throat, but um, the wires are wrong. They're too long and they don't have the right connector on the end. All you need is a wire that runs from here to here. So I'm going to reuse this which means taking it off of the uh, existing unit. Now, of course, taking it off means that we're going to run into all this melted plastic. This is a particularly ugly one, um, but even if yours is, is not as visibly used, there's still going to be plastic in the throat. So we've got to heat it up. I'll show you how to heat it up with a torch later on. That's my preferred method. But for those people who don't have a torch or don't want to use a butane torch, the easiest way to heat it up is to uh, do it while it's still connected to the assembly. I've reconnected the extruder cable and I'm going to turn on the control box and set it to preheat the nozzle. Okay, so we're going to heat the cartridge the same, you would, same way you would normally by going to prepare and then we're going to go down to preheat PLA. And we're just going to heat the end, so preheat PLA end. That's going to bring the temperature up to 195 degrees at the nozzle and uh, will allow us to get the PLA, um, get the nozzle out, notwithstanding any PLA still in the throat. What I generally use to take the nozzle out is a 7 millimeter um, socket, which fits over the nozzle very well, and I hold everything with the pliers that's insulated so I don't burn my fingers. You can also, since it's in a unit, you can hold it by the assembly itself. See how the plastic is coming off now? I'm gonna clean off some of this excess plastic while I'm waiting for it to get fully heated. Okay, so now that it's heated, I'm simply gonna put this in and then I'm going to grab the heat block with a pair of pliers and unscrew the nozzle from it. And as you can see, it unscrews really easily. Uh, when I do this, I generally clean the nozzle and block uh, using a six millimeter tap and die set. 
I re-tap the threads, or I use the die to clean the threads, and I re-tap the threads in here with a, with a six millimeter tap. So now that I've got that out, I'm gonna finish disassembling this while it's hot. I'm gonna pull the, the fan wire so I don't damage the, the fins on the fan. It's, we're not gonna leave it getting hot that long. And as you can see, everything comes apart nicely. And then what I'm going to do is, again, grab the heat block with my pliers and simply unscrew this whole assembly. So now I've got everything apart, and I'll be able to use this on the new heat sink with the new throat and I'll have my wires the right length with the right terminators. I'll show you in a little bit how to do this whole thing using a torch. Um, we're going to need this nozzle and heat block, and since I was unable to remove it because of heated plastic, there's a melted plastic inside, um, I'm going to heat it up with a torch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you do this before you take the uh, machine apart, you can use the heating coil, but since I have torch, a torch available, um, I find that the easier way to do it. So basically I'm just heating the heat block up like the heating cartridge would. And I'm holding the cold block, so I have plenty of thermal mass in between to keep myself my fingers from being burned. Now grab it with the pliers. No, nope, not even too small yet. I see the plastic on the top starting to glisten. <clears throat> there it goes. loosened the old um, hot end, put that to the side, just keep the heat block and the nozzle. So now we're going to assemble the um, BMG dual gear extruder. This is the kit it comes in and you get the hot end and the hardware. The motor cable, we're not going to use this. A stepper motor. You could use this, but because it's a black motor, as opposed to the silver motors that are on the gantry, I'm going to use this so I don't have to change the wiring. So if you want to use this, you just have to flip the inner two wires of the motor cable, but I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to use the motor that came off the old extruder, and I'm also going to use the PCB board and bracket that came off the old extruder. Um, but I'm not going to use this cable. This is the motor cable. It's a little too short for the configuration that we're going to be using. So we're going to take this off and you should find a somewhat longer one in the kit. We add them to the kit. We make certain changes to the kit for, um, for this particular uh, use. So we're going to put this in here. Like that, and we'll just put that to the side for a moment. You're going to find the mounting bracket for the extruder. 
you can find the hot end. Now, you need a direct hot end. If you find a hot end that has an, a big opening and um, threads, that's a Bowden hot end, and that's wrong. These come with Bowden hot ends, but we switched them out with this upgrade. If we happen to miss yours, make sure you let us know so that we can send you the proper one. But you should find one with this little small hole on the top. And then, of course, the extruder itself. So we're going to take this and put it out of the way. We're going to take this and put it out of the way. In the parts bag, you're going to find your hot end with a silicone sock and the extension wires and all of this various pieces of fasteners and whatever. So when you have this set up for a Bowden use, you would use this adapter um, that goes in the bottom of the extruder, so you don't need this. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to take this motor and we're going to attach this drive gear. The drive gear that was on it when we took it out of the other extruder was this brass one, and as you can see, they're different sized with different sized teeth. And the reason is this is a hob gear. This is... Um, intended to drive the filament directly. It presses into the filament. This is just a regular gear that will drive this white gear. And if you open this up, pull this out, you can see, I'm hoping, that this white gear turns a gear in here, which then has the hob gear attached to it. And this gear will then turn, will go on the motor, the stepper motor, and it fits in here, and it turns this gear with the driver, as well as this gear with the driver, and these two come together, kind of like that, and your filament is driven between them. Actually, if I turn it this way, you can see it. So you can see those two gears at the end mesh, and they drive the hob gear, and they're both driven by the white gear, which is driven by this. So that's the gear chain on this. So the first thing we need to do is attach this gear to the stepper motor. And, and unlike... Um, trying to attach the, the hob gear, the drive gear, uh, you don't really have to worry too much about placement. You let it drop all the way down, and you lift it up just a tiny bit to keep it from rubbing on the body of the motor. And then you tighten the single set screw. And you want to make sure that your set screw is against the flat part of the shaft. If it's on the round part, it can slip. And when it slips far enough, it'll hit the flat part, and then it'll flop around. So you want to make sure that your set screw is on the flat part of the gear. All right, so once you've put your, your um, gear in, then you want to take your hot end, and you want to slide the hot end in. No, i got to do it from the back. You want to slide the hot end in. Right at the bottom, there's a little slot that'll hold the top end of the hot end. Then you're gonna slide the two sides together, making sure to align all the pins. There's a metal pin here and there's a plastic pin on the other side. And this is what the assembled unit is supposed to look like. Okay, so we're gonna assemble this to be mounted. You're gonna grab the mounting bracket and you can, you're going to probably do it this way, but um, for the purpose of the camera, I'll do it backwards. So you're going to turn the bracket so that the holes are going to be facing the printer. You take your, your motor, and you're going to put the motor in so that the power connector is at the bottom. Then you're going to take the bracket with the PCB, 
and you're going to mount it so it's facing forward, away from the mounting bracket. Then you're going to take your extruder and put it on so that the hot end is facing down the same direction as the uh, connect connection for the, for the motor's power. Then you're going to take these long screws out of the supplied hardware with the nuts on the Moretti and put them in each hole. And if you see, there's a little bit of a gap here caused by the um, heat sink being placed in there. As you close it, it's going to pull it closed. But that's why you're going to have to screw this all the way in rather than slide it. And as you screw it in, the nuts will disappear into those recesses. And they're big enough to spin, so the nuts will just slide right in. So then you're going to screw each of these in until they move get into the um, motor the hole the screw holes in the motor as the bolt sticks out past the extruder and bracket you just twist until it falls into the motor hole once you get the first one lined up between that and the motor shaft going through the extruder you should be good don't ever screw anything all the way down until all the mounting points are in line because there's always a little bit of play, and if you screw it all the way down, you're locking it in place when it might not be aligned. Like that. You want to screw it in just till it stops. You want to snug it. You want to close the seam, but you don't want to break the plastic. So you can see this seam is now closed up. The head is uh, the head of the bolt recesses into the plastic hole, and then it stops turning, and I'd have to really apply extra pressure to turn it, which I don't want to do because I don't want to crack the plastic. Just snug it nice and snug, not overly tight, and there you go. That's how it should look. Then I'm going to remove the fan and clip. I'm going to screw the new new um, hot end into the block. Grab the heat sink with the pliers. I'm not squeezing too tight. I don't want to damage it. And I'm going to tighten this nice and snug. There you go. Now if it's not already here, you can turn the entire heat sink so that your wire ends up wherever you want it. We're going to take these wires and connect them to the PCB. So now that we've got the extruder assembled, we've got to put the wiring together. And that's basically the same thing as what you took apart. So we're going to run the um, thermistor wire to the top. We're going to connect the two heater coil wires to the screw down terminal. Twist the ends a little bit to make sure you're getting all of the, the uh, strands. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to screw these down. Before you start, of course, make sure this is screwed all the way out, all the way up, so that you have the maximum size hole.
then we supply you with a slightly longer wire than you have on the um, gantry because it's not quite long enough. And we're going to plug that in the six wire down at the bottom. And wrap the wrap it around and put the four wire into here. And then finally you've got the um, the extruder fan which we clip on to the heat sink and bring the wire up and around and we can kind of tuck it in we can do wire management later and that's the first connector right there and that's your uh, how your setup is supposed to look. Okay, you can take the silicone sock that came with the other hot end. And that other hot end, um, the nozzle and the heat block are the same. So you have a spare one. So now we're going to take this plate mounted on the printer and we're going to mount the extruder onto the plate. The extruder's got, the, the mounting bracket's got three holes on the top, three holes on the bottom. We're going to use the three top ones are going to go into these three bottom holes here, and then the bottom hole is going to go into here. The reason I have six is because that's what I was able to align with the metal plate, and I wanted to give maximum flexibility to mounting other extruders. So, let's go to the machine. Okay, so the next step is we want to turn this um, so that the tray is up because the, the, the new extruder mounting plate mounts to this tray, but it's got to be vertical. Um, we could just take this off the extruder, uh, off the x-axis extrusion and turn it, but we want these heads to be on this side of the um, extruder tray and we want to turn the extruder tray around so we're going to take it all apart relatively easy to do oh and while i have it here this tray is being this um, plate is being completely replaced with a plastic one because this interferes with reaching the full range of motion on the x-axis. Once all three, all, once all three nuts are off, we can then just lift this out, and all these pieces become loose. The rollers, the spacers, whatever. So we're going to put all that down here. We need to remove the LED strip. And that's just four nuts and bolts. And we get two of the bolts off the same bracket. and remove the plastic bracket.
Okay, so now that we've removed the brackets, you might find that the uh, LED strip is taped with double-sided tape as well. Just peel it off. And we now have the bracket we're going to need to mount back onto here. So this is the new um, extruder mounting plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the original tray and we're going to fit it inside and screw it together. So reversing the bolts puts the heads in these indentations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to make sure that the um, wings with the two mounting holes are facing um, toward the back plate. We're going to stick a, um, a bolt through it and we're going to grab the longer spacer, one of the rollers, the shorter spacer, so it's going to fit like this. And then we're going to grab the new back plate. one of the nuts and screw it on lightly just till it snugs. And then we do the same thing with the other three or the other two I should say. So now that we have the bracket assembled, we're going to tighten these three nuts. So what we're going to want to do is grab an 8 millimeter open end wrench and just lay it on one of the nuts. Grab a Phillips screwdriver on the other end. And while I'm doing this, I'm cupping the three rollers in my hand to keep them in as tight a triangle as I can. And then I'm going to tighten it nice and snug. And I'm going to turn the whole thing and do the next one. So I'm going to turn it the other way. It's easy to grab for the moment. And again, put the uh, The nut in the open end and then tighten it. The, if the nut if the open end wrench swings, it'll just hit the next nut and that'll help you lock it in place. So you don't have to keep the nut from swinging, just keep it on the, I mean the open end from swinging, just keep it on the nut. And as you tighten, it'll swing to the next nut and hold it in place. So that's two. Now I'm going to go to the third one. And again, same process, still pulling them all towards the middle. 
And again, it's going to swing into the next nut, allowing me to make it nice and tight. So now we've got this set up, and these rollers are tight together, and we're going to put it right on the extrusion. I'm going to put it right onto this extrusion from the side. And if it doesn't fit, all we have to do is loosen this one nut on the bottom to give it a little bit of extra room. So I'm going to put this down, and we're going to move to removing this extrusion. Now, the way we're going to do this is it's held on with two screws on either side from the back with slide nuts in the back track. So I'm going to loosen all four screws, and I'm going to take the two screws off from this end because I have to get past this roller. Um, so I'm going to lift it up. Uh, we'll put the new extruder mounting on from this side, and then we'll put it back together. Eventually, I'm going to remove the inner two of the four screws on the back holding the x-axis in place, and I'm going to replace it with a longer screw that uses this spacer between the front and back of the bracket, and that tightens up and stiffens up the whole X motion. So we will start by loosening the four screws. There are four holes on the back of the brackets in line with the screws, so you can get a screwdriver in there real easy. And I'm only going to loosen these two because we're going to slide the bracket on and off of them. These I have to take off because we have to get above this roller. I'm going to leave the screws in place for now. Okay, so you see how that comes out? So now we're going to take this and we're going to roll it right on. And if you look at it, it's nice and tight. It's locked right onto that. I just knocked off the two screws I was trying to keep in place, but that's okay. So now on the back, there are two, uh, as I said, there are two slide nuts. And what we're going to do, here are the two holes that the screws go through. I'm going to replace the outer one back in the hole. And I'm going to line it up with the slide nut that's in the track. And then I'm going to tighten that back in place because we're still going to use that to mount that one. And make sure that I'm in the right spot. You want to be on this side, so you're just about touching this screw. Not quite touching it, but just about touching it. Like that. Now, this is the other screw that goes right next to this, but I'm not going to put this in. We're replacing this. So before I do anything else, I'm going to come back on this side and retighten the outer one. And I'm going to remove the inner one. So I've now got the X extrusion mounted to the brackets with the two outer screws. And I've got the two inner screws removed with the um, slide nuts that are inside the track in the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hardware that came with the upgrade, and I'm going to remove the two M4 40 millimeter bolts, which are these. And I'm going to take the uh, M440 and the spacer that I pointed to before, and I'm going to shove the spacer in between these two brackets. And it's a little bit of a tight fit because we want the spacer to stiffen this up. So I tilted it up and slid it down behind there. 
and now I'm just going to center it using a screwdriver. And I'm also centering the slide nut that's in here so that I can take the M440 and slide it right through into the slide nut. And tighten it down. Nice and tight. So what we've just done is we have the x-axis extrusion mounted to the bracket with a short screw here and a long screw through a spacer here that locks all of this together and makes it really stiff. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So we're going to take the M4... 40 and screw it right through the spacer and the two brackets and into the slide nut in the back of the X extrusion, the X the aluminum extrusion that makes the X axis track nice and tight. So now there's no movement at all forward or back on this X axis. It makes a beautiful track the x-axis to print from. So now we're going to take this plate mounted on the printer and we're going to mount the extruder onto the plate. The extruder's got the, the mounting brackets got three holes on the top, three holes on the bottom. We're going to use the three top ones are going to go into these three bottom holes here and then the bottom hole is going to go into here. The reason I have six is because that's what I was able to align with the metal plate and I wanted to give maximum flexibility to mounting other extruders. So let's go to the machine. So this plate's going to mount on the tray that we turned vertically earlier. And you've got the two holes on the side that line up with the, with the cover holes that were there. You've got two holes here and two holes here that line up here and here. And you've got this top hole and this bottom hole that line up here and here. So we've got plenty of places to attach it. However, once we mount the extruder, we're not going to be able to get to all of those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a 4x10 um, bolt, 4 millimeters by 10 millimeters, M4 by 10 millimeters long. I'm going to screw it into that middle, kind of middle hole the lower hole of the two vertical ones. Once it's screwed in, we're going to line this back up and that'll go right through the hole we have here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, a nut and just tighten them together. This is the one that will not be available once we mount the extruder, so we have to do it first. And you can use either a nut driver, as I do, or an open end or closed end box wrench to hold the nut. You get a nice tight fit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a 10 millimeter M3 screw through here and go to the bottom holes and slide that in and take uh, an M3 nut, put it on the back, tighten it down. Okay. So this bolt is going through the bracket that mounts the extruder, the plastic face plate that we've added and the metal bracket that was originally the extruder tray. I'm going to sandwich that all together. And I'm going to take my pliers because I don't happen to have a, a socket that hold that will hold that. And just grab the nut and get it a little tighter.
Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the second hole. Nut on the back. Tighten it up. Finally, I'm going to do a third one down here on the bottom. Like that. And it's a little bit trickier, but we're basically doing the same thing. I'm going to put a nut on the back. I just have to get a different angle for it. So I'm unscrewing this bolt so that it's flat with the metal plate so I can slide my finger down and capture the nut because it's a very tight spot in there. Okay, got the nut. That is nice and tight. That's your mounted extruder. As I said, you can do your wire management however you like and there you go all right so the next item we have to install is the bracket that holds the um, part cooling fan and the sensor if you take the leveling sensor you unscrew the bottom nut if necessary you want to screw the top nut up about that high The indentation for the nut is in the bottom. So you put the leveling sensor in through the top. Try and make sure that the LED and the adjustment screw are towards the front. Tighten the bottom nut down as far as you can till it contacts the plastic and then kind of line it up with the indentation and push it up into the indentation and then hand tighten the top nut to lock it in place. And you want to rock it a little bit and tighten and rock it and tighten until you get it nice and hand tight. Then you can take the fan and push the um, opening of the fan into the top of the nozzle like that and that should line up or allow you to line up the two screw holes take the 20 millimeter screw that comes with the hardware that we send and push it through take the uh, it's an M320 the M3 nut and put it in place there's an indentation to hold the nut and tighten the bolt and the bolt will tighten into the indentation a bit keep it from turning and let allow you to get this reasonably tight you don't want to over tighten anything because you're tightening metal against plastic so it's easy to crack stuff if you're not careful you only need things just snug down Okay, so once we have this assembled, we're going to attach it to the back plate of the extruder, the big black one that we put on. And there are three attachment points. These two holes will go on the side of the extruder tray, and this hole will go on the front. We're going to start with this one. 
Inside, <clears throat> the, um, on the metal plate behind the plastic, there are threaded holes for all three of these, so you don't need any nuts, just the bolts. So um, this back connector, or this back uh, screw hole, has a rounded guard on it. <clears throat> That's going to slide right behind the extruder, and they allow you to line the hole up. And then what I do, I'm going to take the bolt and put it through the hole. And I have a long Allen key to use for this. So it's a little easier with a long one. I'm going to line the hole up. And just tighten this in. As I said, there's a threaded hole in the back behind it to accept the bolt. So I'm going to snug it up but not really tighten it down. And then I'm going to take two more. These are tens rather than twelves. Put them in from the side. Again, I'm not going to tighten them down until everything is in and lined up. Okay, so now we've got the part cooling fan with the vent down here, and we've got the wiring for the um, leveling system. Once this is mounted, you want to check that everything is above the nozzle here. So you'll see that this ends just at the nozzle point, which is fine, but this I mounted a little bit too low. So we're simply going to loosen the nut here, which I only hand tighten, but it's still tight. So we're going to loosen that all the way up so we can drop this down to get to this nut and we're going to lower that. Enough so that this point is not below doesn't have to be right at, it can be a little bit above, a little too high, that's fine. But if it's too low, it'll hit your, uh, your print as you're going, and that's not ideal. So I'm pulling it, I pulled it back up, I re reseated the the lower one, now I tighten the top, and that's what we have to do with that. We're going to grab this and hook it back on. And again, this is already plugged into the top one. And then we're going to unravel this, which is the wire for the part cooling fan. And this is going to go over here to the bottom one. And we're going to grab the extruder cable that we had taken off previously. And there's one side that has a, a name tag on it or a, or a number on it. That's going to go right into here. You can use this, uh, which is a cable lock from a Gantry uh, Pro, but the problem is it mounts on the bracket that the lead screw goes through. On the Gantry Pro, there are two holes, 
and you would have to drill those holes into this uh, bracket. So rather than do that, what I choose to do is take the wire tie, and there are two holes right here that we haven't used. So I wire tie this to here. So once we've wire tied the extruder cable to here, you only need it long enough to get it to keep it clean here to here. So we're going to take the other end, push it all the way to that side, and wire tie the other side right to here through the two holes that are unused. And we're also going to wire tie the cable that comes from the sensor giving it sufficient room to go back and forth as well. Take a pair of snips, snip off the uh, excess, and we're done with that. Now you can, of course, if you prefer, wire tie these together to make it look a little cleaner. So then we take the other end of the extruder cable and plug it into the box. Okay, so take some wire ties and clean up this um, wire, the, the wires that are hanging here, however you like. Uh, and the rest of the installation is installing, installing the tram block here. A replacement um, Z end stop switch mounting plate that gives you a longer adjustment slide and the the leveling wires that go into the control box which will all be um, the subject of a separate video because the same process you would use here, you use on the leveling setup for the uh, original gantry unmodified that you want to add leveling to, as well as the, uh, the gantry pro. So we'll leave that one for another day. And the next step we're going to do once I get that done is we're going to print some samples and see how they look. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please make sure you subscribe and that you also uh, click the bell so that you get notified when we publish new ones. Have a great day.